So I actually didn't stop talking to my dad because of everything he'd done uh, when I was a kid. Uh, I didn't stop talking to him because of how he hit us. I didn't stop talking to him because of how he hurt us. I didn't stop talking to him because uh, of how he tried to kill me, <laughs> going to a foster home. Um, none of those reasons, actually. I was on the phone with him doing my honor thy parents phone call. And uh, he was just just dumping all this like work stuff on me. And I, I had this moment where I realized like he never has anything positive to say. Like it is always negative. And the dynamic has always been me sitting there parentified while he dumps this toxic negativity on me. And so I said to him, you know, do you, do you have anything positive to share, um, to tell me? And he just kind of got really quiet and then said no. And I said, okay, well, call me when you do. And that was the last, that was basically the end of, of like our parent-child relationship. Uh, there's an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation uh, where this like, um, I don't want to say galaxy wide, but like <laughs> star systems wide famous mediator comes on board the ship. Um, he's known for like resolving, you know, really tough um, conflicts between, you know, species or, or whatever. And uh, what he ends up doing is he takes the ship's counselor, Deanna, and he turns her into like a receptacle, like an energy receptacle for all of his negative emotions so that he can show up at this mediations, you know, in a complete perfect harmony, nothing bothers him because all of his negative shit is being put on her. And she, she ends up turning into like a crazy person. She ages, she looks like an old crone. He basically says, oh, you know, this is my mother. I'm sorry, she's crazy. You know, when, when he's the one who did it, he drove her crazy. Um, by treating her like his emotional garbage can. And I realized like that's, that's what my dad had been doing to me my entire childhood, just over and over and over and over and over again. He turned me into like a weird spouse, you know, I had to sit there and listen to everything that he wanted to dump on me, but, you know, I wasn't in a position to say, well, you know, maybe you're wrong about that. What about these other things? Um, just an absolute abuse of power over, over a kid. Uh, and I finally got to walk away from that. So here I am struggling in this relationship with a person, my most recent ex um, and he too profoundly negative and I didn't notice it at first I just thought like oh he's like a grumpy old man you know I was still having a great time um, you know because that's kind of my default you know is I'm I enjoy life so I was I was like oh well you know he's grumpy but you know we're having a great time um, the number one way you can tell if someone is stealing your light if someone is using you to dump all of their negativity on, is if you're happy with that person. Are you happy in life when they're in your life? I was in this like really angry kind of a rant place. I was on my walk and I was just like, oh, I'm so mad, you know, and I just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vent. Um, you know, and I'm still, I'm, I'm feeling more resolved now. Like, there's something like walking four miles at all. <laughs> it just sort of make it like, <laughs> process some of that shit. Um, you know, so I'm like, I'm, it's shifted. I'm less angry than I was maybe an hour ago. And I'm more resolved. But what I wanted to share is that there are these people who are attracted 
to somebody's positive energy. And unfortunately, I was in a bad space when I met this person. And I was, I was literally just like coming out. I was just, oh my God, I look back, oh, in the, I was just coming out of an abusive situation. I was just getting a handle on it. I was just figuring it out. I just, you know, started, I just started standing up for myself. I just started getting out into the world again. Um, and I meet this guy you know, who's, you know, loves my energy, loves my light, right? Hungry for positivity because he doesn't have it within himself, right? Thinking, oh, if I'm with this person, then I'll feel that way. You know, a lot of them are like that. A lot of them are like that. Here's the thing though, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how positive you are. It doesn't matter how positive I am. They are not positive people. So all they'll do is figure out ways to resent how you are, or ways that how you are is bad, or ways to dim your light, or ways to convince you that what you're doing is wrong. He used to tell me that I was um, arrogant, but then he'd be like, oh, but you know, I love that because it means, you know, you're strong-minded. Like, I look back on that and I'm like, how the fuck was I not like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, do you like me? Why are you, why are you with me? You know, um, just, there's a, um, Oh, it's in, hold on, let me think. It's the Gottman Institute, and I forget the official designation for it, but basically what it is, is do you look at your partner in a like default positive way? And do you look at your relationship in a default positive way? And I'll tell you what, these people will hold on to a person, even if they don't view them positively, uh, it's it's the most bizarre thing. It's like I don't view you positively except I want what you have, you know, and I'm not gonna let go. And then so you're sitting here like, well, okay, so you love me, but like you don't like me or like what's happening here? It's very confusing. Um, you know, it's not like a really analogous example, but you know those guys that like, they want more than anything to be in a relationship with a woman and to be having sex, but they've somehow tricked themselves into thinking like that they don't value that, that that's not worth value, you know, even though it's literally the thing they want most in the world. <laughs> it doesn't have value for some reason. <laughs> it, it makes zero sense. Um, so anyway, uh, I, I looking back now, on that relationship, on the relationships I had last year, on the relationship with my former friend, and the relationship with my, you know, like my dad, and and you know all of all of these people, and to a person so profoundly negative, absolutely just negative people. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like I have my petty crocker moments, you know, like. <laughs> Um, you know, it's not all rainbows and sunshine, but my default is looking for like, okay, how can I transmute this experience? You know, I will tell you this. One thing that I have, speaking of identity building, past videos, one thing I've learned about myself is I am a strong person in myself, right? I lost that with this relationship for the past three years. Nah, son, that's just back. I know what's going on. I'm strong in myself. I am certain, and I will never, ever, ever let that person talk me into confusion again. I will never let him dump his negative outlook on people in the world on me again. We're done with that. He's not stealing my light. These other people aren't stealing my light. You know what's special about me and people like me? And I assume the person, you know, if you're watching this, probably you. I take straw and I spin it into gold. I take pain and transmute it into lessons so I don't repeat and make mistakes. I show up and think, how can I be in integrity with myself? Again, am I perfect? No. Have I made mistakes? Yes. But am I, as, am I authentic as fuck? 100%. These people, they wear these masks. They're like, they're like, uh, they're like the Joker. Um, 
you're not the Joker, but you know, like a like a like a Joker. You know, they're wearing that mask. They're performing happiness, but they're not happy inside because their default paradigm is deeply negative. The way they look at people is deeply negative. They could be standing at the fountain of everlasting life and drink from the cup and it would taste like sand. That's who these people are. That's why they're attracted to our light and then that's why they can't stand it. <laughs> um, just, it's exhausting to live that way. It's exhausting to continually put up this false self, you know, because you, you want people to perceive you a certain way. That's not accurate. There's a reason you think other people are doing shit like that. It's because you're doing it. Anyway, just if you are talking to somebody and they're, the shit they think is funny is just kind of mean or, you know, they're always a tr hostile attribution bias. Whenever some, they're talking about somebody else, they're always thinking like the worst possible thing, like, oh, they must intend, etc. Um, but oh, I'll give you an example of this. I was talking with my ex and I was trying, I was trying for the last, the last time, the last time I was trying to explain to him, this is what you're doing and it's not okay. And instead of going, wow, she's really, she's trying to communicate with me. <laughs> he said, oh, she's trying to make me feel bad about myself. And I just read that. He's like, you're just trying to make me feel bad about myself. And it's like, that to me signifies that's what you're thinking. That to me signifies that you cannot make the mental leap to where I'm at. And that to me signifies that you are ex attributing the most hostile interpretation of what I'm doing right here, right? You're not extending me the benefit of the doubt. I benefited, I benefited the doubt into this toxic situation with this person. But do they extend me the benefit of the doubt? No, it's always jumping to some weird ass conclusion being super fucking jealous over trivial shit, it's just, it's constant, this attrition, and it wears away at us. And we eventually, like, just fold into ourselves. I stopped posting for the subreddit for a long time, for months, for months. I, I was going through my phone because I needed to get rid of, um, I needed to declare up some data space, and I started looking through conversations that we had had back in, like, February of last year when he had just left me for this other person and I am so angry with myself quite frankly it's like I knew he wasn't safe I knew he was an abusive person but I was still extending him the benefit of the doubt you know but he was just drinking in all of my neediness drinking in all of my desperation drinking in all of my anguish it made him feel better about himself, right? If he had truly, truly loved me and cared about me, he would never have wanted me to feel that way. He would have stopped that. And he would have said, I don't want you to be in this place emotionally. I care about you and I need you to let go. And I'm going to help us do that. I'm gonna help you do that. But no, no, he wanted me to just keep messaging him. He wanted me in that place of, of anxiety and lack and, and chasing him. You know, he liked that. It makes him feel wanted. You know, fuck that guy. Fuck that mental paradigm. Fuck that distorted need. Because he can't fill his own cup, so he's gonna sit there and take and take and take and take and take. And here's the secret. It's never enough. It is never enough for these people. Nothing is ever enough. They are their own consequence for their behavior. You know, you put up a false mask. You never have real authentic relationships with people. He would tell me he felt so isolated. He, he was like, I, I want friends like yours. You know, my friends aren't authentic. My friends are toxic. He told me once, he said, you know, but you only want to hang around people who think you're awesome. I was like, yeah, don't you? <laughs> like... I only want to hang around people that I think are awesome. Like, 
Why the fuck would I want to waste my time with people I don't think are awesome? But <laughs> that's like the dumbest. I don't get it. But I didn't realize that's how he is. He spends his time with people he doesn't like and respect. And thought it was a weird deficiency of mine that I would only want to hang around with people that think I'm all like, why? Life's too short, man. <laughs> You know, if it's not work, if it's not something you have to interact with the person in, why on earth would you have someone in your orbit that isn't like 100% on your team, you know, that isn't like supporting you, uplifting you, thinking you're amazing, like, and that you want to do that for them. Look for people who, are, who respect the people that are in their life, that intrinsically respect other people that intrinsically have a positive outlook, you know? And like maybe, you know, maybe we're wrong. Maybe our positive outlook isn't necessarily accurate, but like our default is not to sit there and assume that, you know, everyone is lying, that everyone is cheating. You know, he sat there and he made all of these faux accusations at me. Like, well, people cheat, <laughs> you know, people do this, people do that. Well, guess who did that shit? Not me. I'm not like that. I'm loyal. I get so mad when I think about how everything he accused me of was shit he did. But he is the one who, who gets to live with him. So I don't get to live with him anymore. I don't, I don't have to have him in my life. My life is amazing now. I cut out, I cut out the toxicity. I cut out the negative people. I, I cut out the, the, the people who don't respect others that sit there and are judging so hard. <laughs> But putting on this mask of like, oh, no, you have no idea that they're judging you as hard as they are. You know, I want people who are real with me. You, you, you know, now, does that mean it has to be mean? No. You know, I have friends that are like, hey, listen, I, I, I you know, please know this is coming from a loving place. I just wanted to, like, let you know this, something to consider. And then X, Y, Z. And then that's it. And they leave it for me to consider and to think about on my own. And it's not, you're bad, and here are X, Y, Z reasons why. And if you don't agree with me, you don't agree with reality, and you need to change your mind. <laughs> it's so controlling. It's so toxic. And they're so absolutely convinced, despite the evidence of their own life, that they're right. You know what I mean? If they're so right, then why are they living in the emotional state they're living in? Why are they endlessly thirsty and can never quench it? You can't quench your thirst with my light because the second it meets your lips, you, you turn it into something else. We don't need those people. We don't need them. They, they steal, they steal our light and they make us think that we are bad somehow and that it's somehow our fault. Mm, mm -mm. That's why it's important to know who you are, right? When you know who you are, we don't let them do that shit. And I haven't been in a good place for multiple years. But that's done now. This is done now. Right? I'm in a good place. I love where I'm at. I love my life. And I, I choose to spend my time with people I think are amazing. And I choose to spend my time with people that think I'm amazing. And we're having like a mutual appreciation society. And we are uplifting each other. You know? And not blindly, you know, with discernment, but from a place of loving care of like, I recognize you're human and I'm human. And, you know, you may want to think about this because, uh, you know, maybe maybe something you want to think about. But it's not so controlling, judgmental. Anyway, you don't need those people. I don't need those people. How do we know? How do we know that they steal the light? Because we're happy when they're gone. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time.